Uh, another guy that you go way back with is Terry Funk. I'm glad you asked. I, I, I love Terry Funk and uh, good God, you know, what a great guy. His wife passed away a couple of years ago. I saw him in L.A. at uh, one of those conventions before the pandemic shut everything down. He was there. You know, I just, you could see that him, his wife passing away was written all over his face. You know, he he was sitting with Honky Tonk Man, but uh, God, I go way back with him. We were good friends. His wife would come over. His wife and him would come over to our house, me and Julie, and we just had a great time. He was a funny guy, and uh, I just hope he gets better. God bless Terry. Did your fathers know each other? With oh, one of the first matches. Oh, yeah. So, Dory Funk Sr., I, when I wrestled in the early 70s in, in Amarillo, Dory Funk Sr., he was, he was fantastic. And he always kept the young guys and talked to us and got us going. And there was Dory Jr. He used to watch, uh, before I got in the, in the wrestling, uh, I'd sit on the front row in Fort Worth, Texas, watched a couple of matches with Johnny Valentine against Dory Funk Jr. when he was a world champion. And uh, great matches. I said, wow. You know, he, my dad would hang his tongue out and go uh, like this over by me. <laughs> I'm sitting ringside watching this, you know, great matches. So they they had to be real. They were so, so awesome. Do you remember much about Abdul the Butcher at this time? You know, major star from the 50s and on from Canada? Well, see, when I first broke in, 1970 in Calgary was Stu Hart. That's where I met Larry Shreve, Abdullah the Butcher. Always nice to me. He was, he drew the crowds there. He, he was supposed to be from Sudan. He, he, he had the gimmick, he played the gimmick totally. He was, he was the original sheep there, you know, and uh, his matches and they were all, they were just like the sheik in Detroit almost. So he was a big guy from Sudan. And, what do you weigh, 350, 400 pounds? And his matches didn't go, go long, but they were blood and guts. <laughs> and uh, he really got over in Calgary and then everywhere he went. But I'll tell you, the main thing about Abdul the Butcher is he went to Japan all the time and drew tremendous houses there. And then he could come back and relax in Calgary. Funny story, I gave my notice to Stu Hart. And I says, I got to get <laughs> I have to get out of here, Stu. And, uh, you know, it was freezing cold up there and long trips and, and hadn't really developed my working style yet. And he had me refereeing a couple times, too. And, and uh, But just I needed a change, so I begged with my dad. I said, please, get me out of here. Nothing against Stu. I loved it. Nothing against Brett. Loved everybody then. But I went to Detroit after that with the iron with, with the original sheet. Abdullah, he says, he said you got enough money to get to the airport because my dad bought me a ticket to go to Detroit. He knows I'm not making any fifty dollars a week, <laughs> whatever. Uh, and then I had to pay. You know, I'm not making any money, and you didn't sell pictures back then, <laughs> and. So I remember he loaned me $50. Could have been 100 but 50 sticking in my head. He gave me $50. I said, thank you so much. And fast forward to 1977 or 78 in Mid-Atlantic in Charlotte. He asked for the $50, man. <laughs> you got that $50, man? And... Oh, what a good memory. And I knew he was going to ask me that $50. It was a joke. Then when I gave him the 50 he kept acting like he didn't want it, but he took it. You know? 